Thank you so much for joining me today. I am here with Jalan Agnew. Jalan is a licensed clinical social worker, a private practice owner. She is a clinical therapist with her own private practice called Knowledge of Self. You can find her at knowledgeofself.com, N-A-L-E-J of self.com. Jalan is also a TEDx speaker, Jalan. And I'm sorry, I was, I was uh, emphasizing the wrong vowel at that time. So Jalan is also a TEDx speaker and has done a phenomenal talk. If you haven't seen it, please check it out. It's on TEDx about intergenerational trauma. So welcome, Jalen. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. You're welcome. And so again, right, because we did have one interview, which was terrific. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I got so much feedback about your video mm-hmm. with like just the amount of people watching your video and people replying and posting comments and also even emailing me or sending me messages, you know, people who I happen to know from Facebook or other online communities were like, hey, I'm wondering about that intergenerational trauma. Is there a way that you can tell me more? So I said, you know what? Let me go right to Jelen and get the information from her for her to share it from her TED Talk and her knowledge around intergenerational trauma. What does it mean and and what is it? Mm. It's such a good question. So let me start with trauma, right? Trauma is a physiological response to an event that happens that is jarring to you. And the reason we really can't define trauma because it impacts people different ways, but just know that trauma shifts the way you see things, it shifts your, your mind, and it also shifts your body and spirit. So when we talk about trauma, we talk about events that happen to people that impact their ability to reason, to remember, to heal, all of those things. When we talk about generational trauma, what we're talking about is things that are handed down from generation to generation. And sometimes they can be broken down into something simple like behaviors, They can be broken down to something simple like what you eat. There's a lot of um, trauma that's handed down in food. And it also can look like your DNA being altered because of the trauma that you endured. One thing that we know is that Black people have had a collective trauma experience because of racism stemming back to the transatlantic um, slave trade. And mm-hmm. you know, people get up in arms and say, why are you still talking about that? But if, if we can look at an individual trauma changing that person's DNA, then what does that look like in a community of people, right? Now you're talking about it impacting on a cellular level what happens to those people. So generational trauma on a cellular level is the DNA with trauma in it. It's also beliefs, it's values, it's behaviors, it's food, it's all of those things that we pass on to the people coming after after us. Okay, terrific, terrific, Jalen. So beliefs, values, food, and yeah. also the yeah. DNA, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like we talked about the beliefs when we first spoke where we talked about like that whole part of it part of it at least was what we talked about when you talked about that whole thing of like no rest right keep going get up and go 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 work 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 don't take a break don't stop right Mm -hmm. that attitude those thoughts beliefs passed down to us right can you tell me a little bit can you share a little bit about the values yeah Um, So some of the value, so when we look at slavery and we look at the psychological, physiological trauma that was being endured, there were a lot of values that enslaved Africans may have taken on in order to survive. Um, So that could look, uh, an example of that could look like, um, it's something interesting. So you, have you ever seen black people when they laugh and they might run away? Yeah. When they're laughing, you've seen that happen yeah. before, right? That's what we it, do, yeah. It, when we come our face. Right, right, right. It is a right. rumor slash belief that during slavery, slaves were not, um, they were not allowed to laugh. So they would run to the laughing wow. barrel and laugh into the barrel. So when we think about something simple, like when wow. we laugh, how some of us retreat and run away, these are the small things that the trauma is passing down, right? Mm. So another value might be, um, 
what's what's another a very black value um what happens in the house stays in the house right mm -hmm. so if i'm trying to maintain the safety within my home or maintain what that looks like i'm going to continue to teach that from generation to generation but what we've learned about that is that we can't assess or fix anything if we're keeping those things to ourselves so the values and the yeah. traditions and the beliefs they look like small things but they end up being very impactful as we continue to to pass them down from generation to generation mm -hmm. this is so incredibly helpful and you know a couple of things that you said right when you, when you talked about the fact that um, you know what stays in this home, what stays, what happens in this home stays in this home, right? I know I personally have worked with my cousins, and you know we've pushed our moms and our dads to stop having that idea. We're like, no, we can talk about anything we want at any given time, and that is okay. Like we have been like, you know what? That's not healthy. Not even thinking of it as inter intergenerational trauma, which it is. And when you frame it that way, yep. that makes perfect sense. Yep. And then yep. when you talk about, um, you know, people who say slavery happened so long ago, why are you still worried about it now, right? When I think about the fact that on my paternal side, my great grandmother was the child of a slave and, and uh, the, the man who owned her, who owned that slave, you know, that's not that long ago. It doesn't feel that long ago when I can talk about it being my great grandmother and what happened in that story you know mm -hmm. um, so thank you for breaking this down some more i really appreciate it i have Can another i have another yeah. example that might be helpful also um mm -hmm. and this is from the university of tiktok because i love tiktok okay <laughs> um, but a, a guy a guy told a story about thanksgiving and noticing that his mom cut the legs off the turkey before she put them in the oven and not really understanding that. So him asking his, his mom and his mom saying, oh, I don't know, your grandmother taught me. And the grandmother saying, I don't know what her mother taught me. And what they learned going as far back as they could was that great, great grandmother's oven was too small. So she mm -hmm. cut the legs off the turkey so it would fit. We got two or three generations later still cutting off the legs based off of that idea, wow. not even understanding the origin of cutting the legs off. That's what generational trauma looks like. Not understanding the origin of cutting legs off, but just learning that that is something that you do. And when mm -hmm. I think about black people, how many in, in, in different situations, how many times are we cutting legs off because great, great granny didn't have a stove big enough, but we have access to full kitchens now. And that's why I have such a passion for this work because the, it's the mindset. Right. Yeah. It's the mindset around the things that we're doing. So go, I know you're going to ask a question, but I felt like I just needed yeah. to give that example as a That's way a, to get yeah. things down. That's a wonderful, wonderful and powerful example, because I think it speaks to so much of what we do and what we don't even think about that we just do. Right. This feels like it feels like culture to us. Mm, yes, yes. And it feels like culture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it feels like culture, but it's something else. You yes. Know? Yes. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how intergenerational trauma can be passed down with, through food? Mm. So again, and, and a lot of these things go back into the history of, you know, the transatlantic slave trade. Now, during that time, we only ate scraps. Mm -hmm. So um, we ate what we could. Now, you know, Black people, we're going to make do what it do, what it don't do, yeah. what it does do, right? Yeah. So yeah. we made scraps into, again, culture. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to eat chitterlings anymore. At one point we did, right? right? So to, to hand down scraps as culture. Yeah. Right. It's very telling of, of handing that food, the, the, the trauma in the food, right? We know about all the health issues we have in our community. We right. know about the mental health issues we have in our community. And yet it feels like culture. And I'm going to steal that from you moving forward as I ex explain this, because soul food feels like culture. Right. Soul food is also killing Black people at rates faster than we can keep up with. Right. right. So going back to that example of we we had to eat scraps at one point, 
passing right. it down to where we have options and yet and still we're still cutting the legs off we're still eating the scraps we're still right. you know eating things that don't have any nutritional value and and while i understand that soul food is for the soul and we never have to give that up it's the balance of that right mm -hmm. that's terrific absolutely you know it's so interesting to hear you say this and it makes perfect sense right and it makes me think about with my family again, right? That's my point of reference for a lot of things, um, especially around this, right? My dad, a mixed race black man, um, desperately wanting to be accepted as black mm. and having struggles throughout his life around that, right? And how important it was for him to make pig's feet, black eyed peas, mm -hmm. all kinds of grits, Oh, yep. like <laughs> chitlins like you name yep. it my dad was making it and he was like this is real food this is what you need to be eating this is yeah. and I ate it and it was good he made it he did a good job yeah. but <laughs> but the reality of eating that you know I think about my mom's response was she had no uh no issue with identification and, and, and appeared as she was and a black woman that's that's it, it was, you know she was solid there she'd be like why get that disgusting crap away from me you gotta bring me some chicken or some steak right. that was my mom, you know right. but it does feel like culture right and, mm -hmm. and it has been in you know integrated into our culture in so many different ways right yeah, yeah. so i completely hear that and that's a terrific example jelly yeah. thank you yeah. Another example, and this is debatable, and people are going to be upset about it. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 violence that we enact on children, mm -hmm. right? We pass we pass that down, and we almost a, a lot of black comedy is actually about our trauma. If you watch black comedy, it's it's actually mm -hmm. trauma, sometimes trauma porn. Um, <laughs> but when we look when we look at the the violence we enact on our children and how that is passed down in a sense of we shame people who don't but when we look yeah. at the roots of and and again we're not talking about you know I'm not talking about spanking someone I'm talking about the violent when it becomes violent when you go over into abuse when you look at the root of where that abuse comes from when you look at all of the trauma that was going on when you look at people who were barely surviving that's another, you know, generational trauma piece that we're handing down from generation to generation. Um, a lot of things were done to our children to keep them safe. I was reading um, post-traumatic slave syndrome um, a couple months ago, and it talked about um, her being in a bank with, with a white mom and a black mom and watching the white children kind of have the room to explore and the black mom having her kids right next to her and knowing that if they do anything, yeah. the consequences are gonna be so much harder. So we can, we can validate the core of why we had to be so harsh of, if I don't beat you, somebody else will. We can understand the core of where that comes from. And we have to look at that and say, is that kind of fear what we want to parent with? Do we need that level of fear still? And some might say yes, but how can we lead into something else that is more rooted in love than in mm -hmm. consequence? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, I think that's powerful and it's also incredibly important and incredibly real, right? I don't want to give any more family examples, <laughs> but I, I will say I have heard the elders say, and I don't mean my mom, but um, the generation above that, you know, spare the rod, spoil the child, right? And this was another thing. I don't know if, if you heard this in your family, but it was a lot of like, when you feed your child, don't give them, don't give them just enough so that they're not full. Mm. I'm not, I never figured that out. Um, but it's all these ways that we teach punishment. Yeah. Um, and in the form of like, oh, well, this is, this is discipline and loving you so that you're prepared for the world. So yeah. I guess we could, you know, prepare you to be beaten, over punished and yeah. not fed, right. not fed enough, you know? Right. And um, you understand the logic behind that, but what that turns into is that the, the culture in it has yeah. some really harmful things the traditions have some harmful things you know in them 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is terrific. So Jalen, anything else that you want to share with us about this topic? Um, I do want to say that I'm trying to, to decide what example I'm going to use. Um, the, the crab in a barrel example, right. Of, um, you, you put the crabs in the barrel and there's a piece to it too, that we don't talk about where you put a cap on the barrel, I think in the very, very beginning of the experiment and you leave the crabs in there, you take the top off, the crabs don't try to come out anymore. In fact, when they put new ones in and they try to get out, all the rest of the crabs will pull them back down. And I think that there is a lot of, there's a lot of that happening in the sense of Sometimes the lid doesn't even exist anymore, but because we understand life from a certain level, we don't want to reach up for anything else. And a lot of that is survival mode things that we do, you know, mm -hmm. keeping it in the survival mode, keeping it make do, you know, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't teach abundance, right? We teach there's right. going to be lack. Let me show you how to make your lack stretch mm -hmm. as opposed to the world is, is an abundant place and you are the creator of your own reality. So some of those mentalities have the trauma in them yes. to where we're not even looking out the barrel anymore because that's what we learned. And it's time to unlearn some of that so that we can get out of the barrel and create whatever it is that we wanna create. And I think for our generation, I'm, I'm late thirties of what do we take with us? And mm -hmm. what we say is, is no longer helpful, right? How can we value and celebrate soul food and say, how do we get back to a, a more healthy diet? Something that was more in alignment with what we were eating prior to the transatlantic mm -hmm. slave trade, right? So like yes. have, taking the lessons from that, taking what we need to know from that while also understanding that we're trying to break those trauma bonds. I want the next generation to feel like abundance is something that they can reach for, you know, making do is fine. You know, working hard and keeping your head down and go, go, go. That is fine until your body breaks down, right? That is fine until your spirit breaks down. So really, really deciding what we take, what we don't and moving forward in a, in a way that is different and more, more healthy. Absolutely terrific. Thank you so much for this. Jalen, you. you, licensed clinical social worker, private practice owner. I'm going to link your website, knowledgeofself.com. And I just, I really appreciate you. Thank you for doing this today. Thank you. You have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.